let me welcome you in this edifice. Um, as a very reliable and trusted partner, we met at the beginning of the year. So before this year comes to an end, we thought it fit that uh, we should meet again. And uh, I praise you on partment things. So today we are here specifically for that purpose. Oh my good God. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. So, um, without taking much of your time, that's just the excellent where we are here. But uh, we are pleased to you know, some of our major activities. At that note, I will now call on the Commissioner, Francis Bertopala, to talk to you and to talk to all of us. Commissioner, sir, our partners are here ready to hear your briefing, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Gobi. And thank you very much to all our partners from the media, civil society who have come to join us in this press conference, which we hold every year around this time concerning the Auditor General's report. I want to start by thanking our team who has put together very quickly. After this report was tabled on Tuesday, we already had a standby team to review it so that we can be clear as to what actions to take, identify the various issues to deal with, and be able to work with our partners, the Sierra Leone Parliament, the Audit Service Sierra Leone, the National Public Procurement Authority, and other sectors responsible for accountability and integrity, including the Ministry of Finance itself, for us to see what headways we can do with regards to the Auditor General's report. Sierra Leone is the only country where direct action can be taken on Auditor General's report, which is an amazing thing. I know that the Auditor General's report is the property of Parliament. And everything we are going to do including what we are going to say here today, is subject to that jurisdiction given to Parliament to deal with Auditor General's report. So we are going to coordinate with them. We are going to work with them. We are going to plan together and execute together in the new year with regard to issues that have been contained in this report. Accountability is a very important thing. And year in, year out, we see that the issues that are contained in this report, some of them could have been averted. If only two things were diligently done across the board. One is supervision, whereby the supervisors play their role to make sure that institutions, ministries, departments, and agencies are properly governed, are transpar as transparently organized, and they hold themselves accountable. So the first thing is supervision. The second is internal controls. Internal controls. What systems are put in place internally to deal with some of these issues which external auditors now come and identify? If the internal controls are strong, if they are working, if they are not undermined or otherwise incompetently executed, many of the issues that are here would not appear. So again, we are firstly reminding every leader in Sierra Leone Heads of ministries, departments, 
and agencies that whenever these things come up and there are many issues touching and concerning their respective agencies, their respective ministries, their respective departments, the false blame rests on all our shoulders, we who are heads. We are supposed to hold our staff accountable. We are supposed to supervise them for them to do their job. We are supposed to take disciplinary action, timely disciplinary action, where necessary. And we are also to hold ourselves accountable. And most times, this can be lacking. And when it is lacking, the auditors come in, and then they have to wash your dirty linens in public. It could have been averted. We want to thank the Auditor General's Department, as always, for their diligent service on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone to be able to diligently review the public accounts of Sierra Leone, the actions of public officers, and then report on it to the members of parliament. We also wish to take this opportunity to let our Sierra Leone parliament and all actors within the accountability system know that this is by no means an attempt to subvert anyone's duties, responsibilities, and actions. We are just part of a whole. And whilst we are waiting for them to play their part, we at the Anti-Corruption Commission are going to begin playing our own part. And we are going to catch up with them when they are ready. As always, all this summary of the Auditor General's Department that we have done, one thing we do is we make copies of all of them. We make them available to Parliament so that Parliament, they are very busy people. Most times they don't have the time to read this bulky document altogether. We have reduced this bulky document into these. Identify them by departments. For example, every issue in the Auditor General's Department has been reduced to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten issues. This entire document has ten issues. One is assets management. How are the assets that are held by these institutions in the country being held? Two is expenditure management. How are they managing the resources, the expenditure that are, they are supposed to do, payroll irregularities, payment without supporting documents, procurement irregularities and contract management, revenue management, so those ones who receive money on behalf of Sierra Leone, how they manage them, statutory deductions, what are you supposed to withhold as by law and pay to other institutions, stores issues, when you procure items and keep them in your stores, how do you manage how they go out and where possible how they return? Unjustified expenses, expenses that there are no explanations for. You spend money and you cannot explain why you spent it. And we have unretired payments. Unretired payment is basically, they give you money to say, go to the provinces, execute something. You are supposed to come back and say, okay, I was given 1 million loans. I spent 500,000 loans on transportation. I spent 200,000 loans on a, 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 a guest room to sleep. I spent another 200,000 loans on contingency. And I spent another 100,000 loans on food. You do it, you sign, you give it to the respective finance authorities. They keep it so that when auditors come, they will be able to know that that 100, 1 million loans you took to the provinces this is how you spent it. It's the simplest thing to do. But most times, every Auditor General's report that comes out, public officers don't just do that. So, under asset management, Sierra Leone lost in the financial year 2022 11,243,602 11 new loans. Under expenditure management, 67,000. 
67 million 812,587 millions. Payroll irregularities 6 6 million 304,683 millions. Payment without supporting documents 87 million 586,702 millions. Procurement irregularities and contract management 100 million 527,362 millions. Revenue management 109 million 98,561 millions. Statutory de deductions and failure issues, those deduct and they do not pay 88,557,482 new loans. Stores issues, 25,674,446 new loans. Unjustified expenses, 6 million sixty three thousand nine hundred and sixty six millions and on retired payments fifty seven million eighty three thousand one hundred and three millions now what we have done is to summarize all these and identify the ministries and departments that are responsible for them and we encourage all of them to have explanations ready for us, when we call on them. We encourage all of them to look in the Auditor General's report. I am going to read out the respective pages that applies to them to prepare their documents because our team are going to start asking actions of them starting today, which means we do not have Christmas. <laughs> We are going to do our job because that is what the people of Sierra Leone pay us for. But it also means some people may not enjoy Christmas because we are going to ask them questions. And again, that is what the people of Sierra Leone pay us for. So, these are the perspective ones, not so. What? Yes, but they're also here because I want to take them by sector. We are going to start with revenue generation. Apex Bank and Rural Financial Development, there is an issue revealed that covers page six. 1,932, 412. No, no, this is the money. But this is the paragraph. Page 85. It is captured in page 85 under paragraph 2.7.2 .2 in respect of Apex Bank. It will be good for those who are responsible to look into it and take action. Bank of Sierra Leone, there is an issue at page 131 in respect of payments without adequate supporting documents. EDSA on retired payment, page 180, covering 311,421 loans. Electricity Generation Authority again, page 184. There's an issue concerning Gordon Tulip at page 176. Immigration Department, at page 334, Ministry of, Fi of Foreign Affairs, what is this? MF, MF, MR. The National Revenue Authority, the National Revenue Authority has various issues, but principally, there is a 240,000 at page 187, which they have to look into and provide ex explanations for. You said this is Ministry of what? Fisheries. Ministry of Fisheries, 
page, they have an issue covering excess daily substance allowance payment to staff and assets not available for physical inspection. Similarly, Road Maintenance Authority, these are all revenue generating institutions. There are issues on pages 119 concerning abandoned contracts or substandard contracts. Sierra Leone Airport Authority, payments without adequate supporting documents, page 172. Various issues concerning Sierra Leone Commercial Bank, starting from page 173. On to page 140. Page, okay, identified at page 173, 173, page 133, and page 140. Sierra Leone Maritime Administration. One of the institutions that we have had challenges with perpetually is Sierra Leone Maritime Administration. There is never an Auditor General's report where there is not a damning issue on Sierra Leone administ Maritime Administration. And as you are aware, since the days of Lukule at SLMA, ACC has been struggling with maritime. We have prosecuted, we have taken actions, we have taken system review, but it just appears the place cannot be fixed. Year in, year out, Sierra Leone Maritime Administration is a prominent part of Auditor General's report. Something is seriously wrong at Sierra Leone Maritime Administration. And this year, there are a plethora of issues concerning Sierra Leone Maritime Institution. Even though several heads have been prosecuted, we have done a lot of recoveries at, 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 at the place. We have done all kinds of systems and review with them. As I speak with you, we have about three or four investigations ongoing in respect of maritime administration. Here they are again. They are in the leaderboard. <laughs> in terms of Auditor General's report. So at page 91, there is a payment without supporting issues, supporting document issues. At page 91 again, Another payment without supporting issues, page 92, page 93 to 94, page 96, page 97, page 98, page 100, page 300, page 500, page 100, page 101, page 101, page 102, page 102, page 103, page 104. All of them covering the Leo Maritime Administration. And the issues are so diverse. They cover payment of, 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 of non-supporting documents for payments, payment of corporate social responsibility, or retired payment, not payment of export freight levies, unjustified payment, unjustified payment, overpayment for vehicles, procurement documents not submitted, Procurement lifting, incomplete maintenance work, contracts abandoned, ineffective, ineffectiveness of the internal audit department. Staff employed without evidence of recruitment processes. Salary payment on, of on, unverified staff. Now, it almost would feel like Somebody just likes to take action against Maritime. Because imagine, Lukule was prosecuted, not so, at Maritime. Serafina Bendu was investigated. She's still paying money to us at ACC in respect of Maritime. Masakoi was charged to court. He was found not guilty by the court and was reinstated. administration of maritime administration even the ones they put to act after you remove those people there are issues in respect of them and these are all serious issues i am calling on the government and those who have responsibility to supervise the maritime administration 
to seriously look into what is happening at maritime administration again. We have been doing our job and our part in respect of these issues, but they perpetuate. Year in, year out, there are just too many issues on maritime administration. It appears it does not matter who goes there. I only hope that this is the last time we'll have such serious issues coming again in respect of maritime administration. Moving on from maritime administration, there are other revenue generating institutions where there are serious issues, and that includes the Sierra Leone Sports, the Sierra Leone Post Authority. They too have many issues in the report covering salary payment of staff, poor debt collection, and we have the Sierra Leone Roads Authority, Road Safety Authority. They are also another usual customer in this Auditor General's report. And there are various issues. The Road Safety Authority, payment without adequate supporting documents, page 169. Difference between the General Ledger, PAYE, and NASIT contribution, page 170. Payment without adequate supporting document, page 165. Payments made as corporate social responsibility without expenditure returns, page 165. And these are also Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority. Payment on accounted revenue, page 166. Again, Road Safety Authority, unpaid fines disclosed in the financial statement, page 168. And we have the Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority again, at page 168, PYE deducted, and they did not reflect in NIA accounts. Then we have the Sierra Leone Rules Authority, the SLRA, which is different from SLRSA, so let's not confuse them. They also have delays in execution of contracts, which are more structural issues, poor revenue collection from rights of way issues. So all these people who are building houses along the highway, some of them are paying rents. Either those rents are not being collected, or somebody is collecting them, and we don't know what's happening with them. We have the Universal Access Development Fund, where there is an issue on page 202 in respect of management of receivables, and the same in UADF, there is an issue of on page 203 in respect of rural installation, installation of telephony systems. Why I'm starting with Revenue Authority, Revenue generation institutions is because they are the lifeblood of the country. If we are poor today, one of the reasons that could be is because of the way revenue generation is being done, whether well or not well. So I have called them out for them to now look into this audit report themselves and prepare their answers for us. Because after we shall have met with Parliament on the 6th of January, and we have agreed on cause of action, some of these issues are going to be dealt with. Some. If you are the finance director, like the one that says unaccounted revenue, we ask you where is the revenue. If you have your answer for us, you show us the money lying down in your account, you are safe. But if we ask you for unaccounted revenue, and you are start saying, well, 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 you are likely to spend some time with us. And we don't want that for anybody. So it will be good for them to now start seeking answers for themselves. Or most importantly, when you are coming, you come with the money in your bag, as some people have been doing. When they are coming to see us, when we invite them, they come with the money in a bag and say, Commissioner, here is the money. We can still investigate you. But the effect would have been lesser because the money is sitting there in our office and we can return it to whosoever it was meant for. Other issues I will not go through. I will just say them out. Local councils, as always, there are several pages of issues of various local councils. Tonkolili, several issues. But local, several issues.
Moyamba District Council, several issues. Kono District Council, a lot of issues. Kenema District Council, several issues. Cambia, several issues. Freetown City Council, several issues. Falaba District Council, various issues. Both municipal council, many issues. Bombali district council, many issues. Bo district councils, many issues. And Cambia district council. It will be good for those who are in, in, responsible for these councils to check what is contained in these reports. Tax liabilities. Those who are supposed to pay their taxes and have not paid. There are various issues concerning the Sierra Leone Skills Development Project, PAYE deducted but not paid. Sierra Leone Skills Development Project, non-payment of NACIT. Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, non-payment of withholding tax. Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, non-payment of GST. Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, Overpayment of DSA, Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, overpayment of DSA again, Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, tax on medical allowance not paid to NIA, Sierra Leone Free Quality Education, inadequate, inadequate deduction and payment of PAYE, Sierra Leone Free Quality Education, unpaid withholding taxes, Sierra Leone Free Quality Education, unpaid NACIT contribution, Sierra Leone Financial Inclusion Project, non-compliance with statutory obligations. Sierra Leone Agro-Processing Competitive Project, non-payment of PAYE. Sierra Leone Agro-Processing Project, non-payment of NACIT. Sierra Leone Agricultural Research Institute, withholding tax deducted but without evidence of payment to NIA. Rural Finance and Community Improvement Program, withholding tax not paid. Jala University, statutory deductions not paid to the relevant authorities. Jala University, withholding taxes not paid. National Commission for Social Action, payment, non payment of PAYE. National Commission for Social Action, non payment of NACIT. National Commission for Democracy, withholding taxes deducted without payment. FOWPA. I'm not sure what that acronym is, but they are they did not pay GST. Ministry of Works and Public Assets. Ministry of Works and Public Assets. Then we have Moped. NGO in the National Gazette without evidence of payment to NRA. And Ministry of Labor and Social Security withholding taxes not paid. Administration of Health and Sanitation Headquarters. Statutory deductions paid without PAYE. Ministry of Energy with all the taxes not paid. Mitimaga Technical University, non payment of PAYE. Guma Valley Water Company, non payment of statutory deductions. And we have other local, local councils as well who deducted. These are, we told it, tax liabilities. Tax liabilities are the easiest for us to deal with. Tax liabilities are the easiest for us to deal with. Over the years, it's simple. You pay salaries, you deduct NACIT. Where is the money? You bought something, you withheld a certain percentage. Where is the money? I am hoping that those who have these explanations, the finance officers in these institutions, are ready to either come with a receipt of payment to, of this to either NACIT or NIA, or they come with the money to us. We do not want too much explanations. It's either you deducted and it is available, or you have a clear, simple explanation as to why you have not paid, or you come with evidence that you have paid, the auditors were just mistaken. All these three are simple to provide. And we will not want many explanations. So the finance officers must be ready because there is going to be a standing instruction to detain them if they cannot provide that explanation. There will be a standing instruction for them to be detained 
if they cannot provide that explanation. There are many issues on diplomatic missions. The embassy in Geneva, Switzerland, used consular fees they received without authority from the Ministry of Finance. Again, that is $122,168. They used it by themselves without going through proper processes. That is a clear offense in the Anti-Corruption Act. The embassy again in Geneva, Switzerland, used 21,163 dollars. Difference between revenue collected and revenue paid to consular fees account. So they are, what they paid to the consular fees account, there is a balance of $21,000. Somebody has to show us what happened to $21,000. Again, the total for the embassy in Geneva is 143,331 euros. $331. Sorry, I'm so used to Leo's that, uh, you know, we are not the dollar people. <laughs> Geneva, again, the embassy in Abu Dhabi has five issues, all of them totaling to $989,973. That is nearly $1 million. And they include records for consular funds collected, not properly maintained, Gratis visa issued without note verbal. Payment without supporting documents. Lack of control over the payment process. Irregularities and inconsistencies in the payroll. $989,000 lost. The embassy in Abu Dhabi has to have some form of explanation for this. And it is better for them to start preparing themselves to send those documents to us. If not, when we start our investigation, the first thing we are going to do is to request that they be recalled from their respective embassies. The embassy in Iran also had three issues, totaling $32,000. And these are captured on page 253 and 254 and 255 of the Auditor General's report. It will be good for those who are responsible for this to read those reports and see what they can do. The embassy in Turkey has four issues, totaling $138,535. They are captured between 200, page 253 and 246 page, page 246 of the Auditor General's report. The embassy in Saudi Arabia has six issues, totaling one million three hundred three hundred and forty-one thousand seven hundred and forty-one millions dollars, and they all range from payments without supporting documents, local travel transactions, overseas traveling, using public funds and activities, consular activities that were not authorized. I believe this is one of the most extensive review of diplomatic missions ever done by the Auditor General's report. I will congratulate and thank them for this. However, let those people not think that because they are not in Sierra Leone, nothing will be done. Definitely something is going to be done. And we are going to work with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to make sure that all those responsible to provide these explanations are returned to Sierra Leone for them to provide those explanations. <coughs> we have issues in general category with various institutions, including the Ministry of Agriculture, the Board Government Hospital, the Cabinet Secretariat, the District Health Center, the Andes by Chroma University, the Gavi IPAO, the Judiciary of Sierra Leone, MBSSE. There are a lot of issues concerning Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education. Many, many issues covering 
several pages in the Auditor General's report. In fact, I believe that there are more issues concerning the MBSSE than any other ministry. So it would be good for those in the Ministry of Education to read pages 283 onto page 380 of the Auditor General's report and those responsible are either ready to provide answers or they have the answers and they can speedily bring, us, bring them to our attention. We also have many issues concerning the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. On retired impress, double payment of salaries to staff, staff failing to report for diplomatic assignments, ineligible payment of child and education allowance, distribution of donated vehicles, salary paid to non-staff. Okay, that is Ministry of Work. So, Ministry of, of Finance ends at distribution of donated vehicles without uh, going through proper processes. Foreign affairs. And Ministry of Works, we have salary paid to non-staff. Can you imagine? The person is not even a staff and they are paying salary to that person. There is Ministry of Energy payment without supporting documents. Ministry of Agriculture. There are also issues concerning, there are a lot of issues concerning Ministry of Agriculture. Many issues covering pages 264 to 200 and 267, 68 of the Auditor General's Report for Ministry of Agriculture. Ministry of Health, various issues. Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Public Administration, one issue. Ministry of Technical and Higher Education, two issues. Ministry of Tourism and Culture, two issues. Ministry of Transport and Aviation, one issue. Ministry of... What is this? Ministry of Environment. Anyway, there is an issue concerning the MOECC. Sometimes these acronyms can be difficult to decide because there are too many. That concerns incomplete delivery of seedling to service providers. And there are three issues concerning the MOECC. The Ministry of Finance has four issues, budget overrun, budget overrun, Access management on unutilized if missed license. We have some issues with the Ministry of Health. We have issues with the moped. And we have ministries of social welfare and gender. We have ministries of youth affairs. And we have um, issues concerning the National Civil Registration Authority. And of course, we have various issues concerning NAXA. The Jalai University is also captured. We have issues concerning the Petroleum Directorate and the Stage Management Company. So it's good for those institutions to review those and check it out. So um, these are the key issues that we have highlighted. There are other sectors that are also captured, which we encourage every public officer to review the Auditor General's report. If you have a challenge with reading bulky documents, if you have a challenge with reading doc bulky documents, all you need to do is to contact our public education department. They will give you concisely something like this, which captured very precisely what concerns your ministry. Every ministry, department, and agency is welcome to come to the ACC Public Education Department and get a copy of the section and areas of the Auditor General's Department that concern them, and then try to see what we can do with it. But more generally, we continue to thank the Auditor General's Department and welcome the release of this report. 
We are going to now invoke to work with Parliament. They have already invited us to a meeting scheduled for the 6th of January 2024. And the purpose will be how we are going to coordinate to deal with the Auditor General's report. I am going to con continue, myself and my deputy, we are going to continue consulting with the Speaker of Parliament, the, deputies, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, and the Clerk of Parliament to make sure that we do not in any way undermine their own role as a principal arm of government of this country, whilst we too at the ACC do not renege in our duties to pursue corruption wherever it may arise. At this point, I will pause, and, and if there are questions, they can be asked. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Commissioner, for taking your time to elaborate on the issues from the 2022 audit report. Now we're going to turn the microphone to you, but uh, the Q&A is being guided by rules. When somebody asks one question, touching on one thing, please don't repeat it. Let's make use of time as we are aware we are really, really busy. So the first but we're going to allow four people to ask. <coughs> so after which now allow another batch of four people. Two sets of questions, and that's it. Then you have to show your name, the media house or the institution you are coming from. Please. Yes, Alaji. Thank you very much. My name is Alhaji Saidi Kamara, and I work for the Global Times on Skate Panels. My question is to the ACC boss concerning the general maritime application. You have said year in and year out, we have issue with the general maritime administration. In spite of all efforts to see to be that to maximize or to reduce some of these problems, which people comment. I want to ask you what is the problem, what is the solution, and what's the way forward. If you do have said that you are going to call the cost of the service are going to do but since we are in charge of corruption, I want you to explain there what plan we have so that we can achieve this SLM. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yes. Yes, my name is John Kelly Langa. I work for the Astra Focus in the report of the day. The Commission has all this barrage of corruption and this of cases in the United How speed do you think the presentation will be? Yes. Yeah. Any other question? Yes. yes please please stand and be quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's, the, what's the newspaper? What's the newspaper? Equality now. Equality now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who can be held directly responsible for monies not accounted for at the embassies? And then number two, in all this presentation, there is nothing on this. So we are not correct. Yes. All 